Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. January 12th, uh, 2024, Friday afternoon, TGIF. A lot of people ask, so I'm going to give it to you right now. What are some items that sell for over $100 or can sell for over $100 on eBay to make a better profit, higher ASP, average sale price, higher profit, so you can do less work and less listing time and maximize your store's sales and profits with less items? Well, I put together lucky number 13 of them. We'll jump over to my screen right now and I'll show you all these items that can potentially sell for over $100 and that you can commonly find many of them at garage sales, thrift stores, estate sales, moving sales, all sorts of places like that, flea markets, you name it. Let's go over to my screen and check out all 13 of these items that are worth $100 plus. All right, number one is DVD VCR combos. You guys have probably seen a lot of people in Facebook groups selling these. They're kind of vintagey, of course, VCRs, VHS tapes, who watches those, but they are super popular. They sell for a lot, and even the used ones can sell many, many of them, over 100. Now, you gotta look up the model numbers. As with all 13 of these items, you have to look it up because some of these are worth over 100 to 200. Some of these can be worth 50 or 60, but a huge amount of them used and especially brand new. I've done used on all these listings, but brand new ones can fetch even more, up to 500, $600 on some of them, but many, many of them in the 100 to $150 range. DVD VCR combos, be careful. They do cost 20 bucks to ship usually, um, plus the fees. So you can be 40, $50 out of pocket after fees, shipping, and then your cost of goods. So make sure you price accordingly. Number two is AOP and vintage shirts. AOP stands for an all over print. It means it covers the entire shirt, usually to the back. Vintage shirts, uh, I threw these in there, number two, because it's like the hottest item on the market. Make sure you learn how to tell the tags, how to tell a single stitch versus normal, how to tell when it's actually a vintage shirt uh, versus a reproduction because a vintage one might be worth $220 and the reproduction one might only be worth $22. So be very careful when you're doing that. Anything from Star Wars to movie print to ca uh, cartoon characters to uh, obviously our band t-shirts, our Iron Maidens, our Beatles, our things like that. Star Trek and Star Wars, very popular video game shirts with all of that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, NASCAR, all possible. There's a really great Jeff Jordan Jurassic Park, the ride one, sold for $220 all in. That's a fantastic shirt, and that's from 1997. You guys can see uh, the wrestling shirts do really well, uh, WWE, WWF, WCW, all that sort of stuff. Um, band shirts, probably the most popular. Um, Pokemon, this is a really great shirt. So any of these all over true vintage shirts are uh, over $100, almost always. Number three is power tools. Tool specialty, specialty tools, things like um, obviously are you know uh, the compact tools, things like Makita and Ryobi and Dewalt and all those types of brands. Milwaukee is always up there. Um, saws, uh, fluke tools. I talk about fluke meters, multimeters, anything that's like cordless saws, cordless um, drills, presses. Uh, this is a plunge router. Uh, a lot of these are definitely over 100, 150 bucks. I see them at yard sales all the time, $40, $50. People might be like, oh, I don't want to spend 40, 50 bucks at a yard sale, but if it's worth 140, 150, and you got $100 in room, you take your fees and your shipping out, and all of a sudden you've made 60 bucks on one item, now you're doing something. Number four, cowboy boots, cowgirl boots, cowboy boots, boots in general, like, uh, you know, these Western type boots. Uh, again, I've done all used, pre-owned on all of this stuff. A lot of these boots are minimum $75 to $100. The majority of them well over $100. You can see there's 7,100 sold listings for just cowboy boots that are pre-owned over $100. If you added cowgirl boots in there, you'd have another five or six or 7,000. There's easily 15, 20,000 listings of used over 100. So imagine how many are not over 100, but these are just really great sales all the time. You can find them at a thrift store or at maybe somebody's estate sale for 20 bucks, 25 bucks. You throw them up there for 140, you're doing uh, really good profits there. Number five, video game systems. I search for just PlayStation 4 consoles used and 12,000 results. Again, these could be 130, 140. PlayStation 4 has been out for, God, 10, 12 years at least. I bought my PlayStation 5 three years ago and I bought my PlayStation 4. I remember playing Grand Theft Auto on PlayStation 4 uh, when I had my first apartment, which was like 2000 and 10 maybe 14 years ago 15 years ago something like that so this playstation 4 has been out for a very long time somebody can look up the release date on it 2010 2011 something like that 
uh, but you can still get over $100 for a lot of them. If you bundle them up, you know, people getting 190 here. So you could find a bundle. Maybe this bundle was at a garage sale for somebody asking, you know, 75 bucks, 190 leaves you $125. Even if they asked 100 and you had a $90 profit margin fees and shipping, you can make 40, 50 bucks. Not a bad flip. Number uh, six is cell phones. We all know my speech about being careful with iPhones and Androids and iCloud locks and making sure you educate yourself about the differences in the sizes and the gigabytes and the uh, service providers and the iCloud locks and the unlocks. If you don't know anything about this, probably a bad one to yield into. But if you do, these are high dollar, high profit items. I mean, this one, let's say it's worth $677. You could pick this thing up off somebody on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or somewhere for 400 bucks, 277 profit, less you know $100 worth of fees and shipping all of a sudden you've made $177 in one item. I used to average $100 profit on cell phones all day long. iPad, same story as the iPhones. Uh, make sure you educate yourself. This is an iPad Pro 12.9. It's actually what I own right behind me. You see it in a lot of my videos. Uh, I think I own like a third or fourth generation. They're up to like six generations now on these things. Uh, mine is probably worth a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I've had it for quite a few years, five years, six years. Um, here's a third generation that sold for 449, so still pretty good. Second generation selling for 350s. So somebody has a really old one they've had, like me, and somebody came along to me, you know, and was like, "Hey, I give you 250 bucks for it." I might be like, "Okay, you can, you know, I'm selling it 250 bucks." Obviously, I wouldn't because I know how to sell online. But if somebody like me had one, now it sells for 450. There's 200 profit. There's 60, 70 bucks in fees or shipping. You've made 130. Even if you made 100, still good to go. MacBooks, same exact story. See. Uh, rule A, rule B, phones and tablets, make sure you know how to clear them, make sure you know how to look up all of their features, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, make sure you know how to test them, make sure you know the differences in prices and how things get differentiated from a $300 MacBook to a $700 one. Okay, so that was number four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine is instruments, musical instruments, flutes, clarinets, trumpets, trombones, uh, saxophones. We have one here that was fourteen hundred. Uh, sometimes you can get lucky. You know, you can find one of these Yamahas that's worth one hundred fifty or two hundred dollars sitting at a yard sale or at an estate sale. You pick it up for fifty bucks, and again, you're making money. When you're selling something for two hundred dollars, one hundred fifty dollars, it's okay to pay thirty, forty, fifty, sixty bucks because you have plenty of margin. When you're selling something for twenty and thirty dollars, then you can only pay a few bucks for it up to five bucks when you're selling something for 10 times that price when you're selling something for 180 for 200 for 250 bucks you can absolutely pay 10 times what you would normally pay so we're used to buying an item for four bucks and selling it for 20 now we're going to sell it for 10 times for 200 so we can pay 40 50 60 dollars and make a margin Movado watches uh pretty much any kind of collectible watches um Gucci actually has watches. Michelle watches are good. Movado watches are good. Reselling Apple watches, again, same story. Make sure you know how to uh, resell them. Make sure you know how to completely unlock them, etc. But Apple watches hold value pretty well, over $100 for most of them. And you can pick them up for $40, $50 uh, for normal watches. Maybe an Apple watch you pick up for $100, sell it for $200. Make yourself $50, $60. Purses, handbags, uh, don't recommend getting them from thrift stores. A lot of them are fake, but if you know how to authenticate, if this is up your alleyway, you know what you're doing. Uh, you can't sell fake purses even if you label them as fake. It's illegal, but if you know how to authenticate and get real ones, Coach, Prada, Gucci, Fendi, uh, Balenciaga, there's what, uh, Louis Vuitton, obviously. Uh, there's, you know, Dooney and Burke. There's a million different brands that you can look up. Even some Michael Kors can fetch over $100. Vintage stuff is good as well. Um, you know, you could pick these purses up off of a lady on Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks. She just wants to clear her closet out. She has four or five real ones. Uh, you give her 50 bucks a piece, 250 bucks. You're selling them all for 120, 140. All of a sudden, you've got, you know, uh, $1,000 worth of purses that you paid a couple hundred dollars for, and you're off and running. So... Number 12, that was number 11. Number 12 is jackets, vintage bomber jackets, down jackets, starter jackets, the vintage, you know, Dallas Cowboys, Eagles jackets. Lots of these are well worth into the hundreds. NASCAR jackets like this one I just clicked on, this Mountain Dew jacket sold for $200 plus 12 shipping, so $212. Um, you know, stuff with the little faux fur lining, the canvas jackets. Uh, here's a really great uh, Florida Marlins uh, jacket that sold for $190. It's a bomber style jacket. Um, anything like uh, used North Face, used Patagonia, great stuff like that. 
uh, used Carhartt. There's all kinds of stuff. Easily 100, 150 bucks. Pick them up at flea markets for thirty dollars, forty dollars. They're happy to sell them. They're pickers. They picked it up for you know five bucks at a Goodwill outlet or Goodwill thrift store or wherever their sources are, and they sell it to you for forty or fifty, and you flip it for one forty. It's business, right? Number thirteen, shoes. Shoes are always a winner. Nike, Adidas, Under Armour. Um, any of the specialty ones, right along with cowboy boots, cowgirl boots, normal running shoes, basketball shoes, uh, any with the the celebrity, you know, the high end basketball player names, LeBron, Kobe, um, Garnett, any of those people uh, with shoe lines, Jordans, obviously number one. Uh, this is one you have to learn how to tell the reels from the fakes. Again, if that's your market, if you know what you're doing, easily getting hundred, hundred fifty dollar pairs of shoes, picking them up for fifty bucks, sixty bucks, and flipping them. So the the rule of thumb here and the lesson for today is if you can find something that's worth a hundred to one hundred fifty bucks and you can pick it up for fifty or less, forty or less, you are in business. You can easily double your money, if not a little bit more. You're buying for fifty, you're selling for one fifty. That's a hundred dollar profit. You got fees, you got shipping, you make fifty, sixty dollars. So that's really where you want to target it. Instead of selling an item for twenty and making ten. You can sell an item for 100, 150 and make 40 or 50. You've made five times your profit in one sale, so you don't need quite as many items. All right, I think that covers all 13 of them. If there's any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, leave it down below. I'd love to hear if you want to throw in any more $100 plus items that you love or that you're used to flipping or that you think are great items to add to the list. Other people can read them and start opening themselves up and, and searching outside of the box. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here on a Friday. TGIF Friday, hit that thumbs up below. It takes one second, turns the thumb blue, and helps my YouTube algorithm. Really, really appreciate that as well. And subscribe to the channel, come back for future videos. And until next time, have a wonderful evening and a wonderful weekend. I will see you guys later.